Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for April 4th, 2019. Right now, for the next couple of weeks, I've been... I already started teaching on the road to the resurrection, and I'll do that. I'm I'm preparing us to think about Easter Sunday morning, resurrection Sunday morning, when Jesus got up with all power in his hand. But we can't have the resurrection without the crucifixion. And I'm talking about the pain that Jesus had to endure for us. And so we should embrace that pain. We should realize that pain, acknowledge that pain, and then live our lives in honor of Jesus's death. That's the title of today's message. Live your life in honor of Jesus's death. So um, I, I don't have time to read all, you know, the, the entire passage, but read John chapter 19 when you get a chance. And, uh, and I'm going to deal with that on today. So Jesus was taken from mock trial to mock trial in the middle of the night without any witnesses actually testifying against him, without any true charges actually being built up against Jesus But nonetheless, this was done, you know, this mockery of justice was done, and Jesus wound up in front of Pontius Pilate. Um, They were there because the Israelites were under the captivity of the Romans at the time. If the Jews had the power to kill Jesus themselves, they would have killed him, but they didn't. So they took him to Pilate, who was the Roman governor within that realm, and they were asking for Pilate to approve Jesus's execution. However, Pilate could really find no fault with Jesus. You know why he couldn't find any fault with Jesus? Because Jesus did nothing wrong. So Pilate wanted to set Jesus free, but the Jews were aggressive and they were persistent and they were doing all that they could to convince Pilate to do it. So Pilate had a dilemma. In his heart, he knew that Jesus was innocent, but he also wanted to maintain his relationship with the people that he was ruling, right? So he was like, man, if I let this guy go, then, you know, my constituency here is going to be in an uproar. So what do I do? So he said, okay, well, he came up with an idea as a last ditch effort to save Jesus. And, you know, and not really have an issue with the Jewish religious elite who wanted him killed. He says, okay, I know they want me to make the decision. I don't really want to make the decision because I don't think it's the right decision. So I know what I'll do. I'll put it in the hands of the people because obviously this guy did nothing wrong the people will let him go free and then I'll be okay with the Jews, right? So he says, okay, he goes up to his peep, to the people and says, okay, um, I got to give the people a decision. So he had to give the people an option. If he just put Jesus out there, it wouldn't be a decision and he wouldn't look right with the Jewish, you know, leadership. So he goes, okay, well, let me give them an option, but to hedge his bets, he says, okay, I'm going to juxtapose Jesus, who I think is innocent, with a man that I know everybody knows is guilty. His name is Barabbas. Barabbas deserves death. Barabbas has earned this execution, right? So he had a death penalty. He was lined up to be killed. He says, okay, well, everybody knows this guy's bad. So let me line up a person that I don't think he's done anything wrong with some someone that everybody knows is wrong, right? So yeah, this should be good. I'll line them up and then I tell the people, hey, you guys pick whoever you want and whichever one you want to go free, I will release. And to his dismay, the people picked Barabbas. (laughs) The people picked Barabbas. Of course, you know, Jesus had to go to the cross. So, but I'm just saying like, he's like, you gotta be kidding me. So the people picked Barabbas, and with that, the only innocent man to ever walk the planet was sentenced to death. So the next step was to nail Jesus to a cross on top of a hill. Jesus was forced to carry his own cross up the hill to a place known as the Skull, or in Aramaic, the place is called Golgotha. So this is Golgotha's hill. And and listen, now I'm about to kind of really back up for a moment and paint the picture of what happened that night. And as I do that, I I know that you're busy. I know you may be on a train right now. You may be in an Uber. You may be like drinking some coffee, thinking about your day and all of that. I need you to, to, to stop. I need you to focus. I need you to rid your mind and your heart of all distractions so that you can really think about what Jesus did for you, right? Let me paint the picture quickly. Jesus had the last supper with his disciples. You've seen the picture, right? He washed their feet, And then he went and he prayed and he prayed with them for hours. They fell asleep, but he was praying for hours. He prayed for himself. He prayed for the disciples. He prayed for believers. He prayed for Judas. And then Judas betrayed him with a kiss. 
the policemen tied Jesus up and they arrested him like a dirty criminal, right? They dragged him, watch this, from mock trial to mock trial in the middle of the night under the cover of darkness and then they pleaded with Pilate to have Jesus executed. Once he was convicted, even though Pilate tried to get him out of it, they ordered a skillful torturer to take a cat of nine tails. Now, a cat of nine tails, think of like a whip, but think of like a whip that has nine whips on it. So nine lashes. And then every one of those leather lashes had little bits of stone and metal kind of sewn into it. So then they take a man who is skillful at this thing and he takes his cat of nine tails and he lashes Jesus with it. And every time he hit him once, it was like being hit nine times. And then there's little pieces of stone and little pieces of metal that drive themselves into Jesus's back. And then the man yanks it back. And when he does that, little pieces of Jesus's back just kind of fly off of his back with it, right? So the torturer is hitting him and he did this 39 times. After that, they punched Jesus in the face. When I read that in scripture, it really bothers me. I'm from Brooklyn. One of the worst, one of the most disrespectful things you could do is punch someone in the face and spit on them. They spit on Jesus. They punched him in the face. They put a hood over his head. They slapped him while the hood was over his head and said, if you're a prophet, then prophesy who slapped you. They took, uh, uh, they took thorns and twisted it up and, and, and and they made it like a like a crown and they pushed it down into his head to where his head was bleeding. And they did this in mockery of the fact that he was known as the king of the Jews. And then the blood was dripping down his face. And then Jesus took his battered and bruised body and, 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 and they made him carry his own cross up that hill. And so he had to carry the cross up Golgotha's hill while the crowd was yelling at him and mocking him and ridiculing him every step of the way. And as Jesus looked out, I'm sure that he saw some of the faces, the same people who just a few days earlier were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna to Jesus as he was making his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Those same people were now crying out, crucify him, crucify him. So watch this. Jesus's disciples had scattered. They were gone. The people turned on him and they sentenced Jesus, the only innocent man to ever walk the planet. They sentenced him to death without one witness and without any true charges, without committing any crimes. So can you picture him for a moment? Think about this. Close your eyes if you have to, but picture Jesus. He has been beaten silly. His back is ripped wide open. His skull has been pierced. He is painfully carrying his own cross up the hill with this battered and bruised body. And when he finally makes it up the hill, they take the cross that he was carrying and they lay it down on the ground. They then lay Jesus on top of the cross. They stretch out his hands and they take like these railroad size spikes and they start to drive it through Jesus's hands and they also drive it through Jesus's feet. Now think about it. I know that you've heard like a, a, a sledgehammer hitting like a railroad spike. Can you imagine that sound? Maybe you've heard it in a movie. Bang! Bang! Glory to Jesus. Bang! Can you imagine that? And they're doing that and it's going through his hands and then they repeat the process and it goes through his feet. And they did all of this. They did it. They, he went through all of this pain. Why? Why did he endure the pain? Why did he go to the cross? Why did he have to be tortured? Why the crucifixion? The answer is simple. Because of you. Because of me. Now think about that for a minute. I'm sure that you got a million things on your calendar. But right now, think about that. Jesus looked past all that pain. He looked down through the annals of time, 2,000 years, and he saw you. He saw me. Jesus went through all that he went through because of us. So what does this mean to you today? I just have three quick things to share with you. Number one, Jesus paid a great price for you. Whatever you're going through right now for Jesus, it will always pale in comparison to what Jesus went through for you. Remember that when you claim to be persecuted. In 2019, you say, oh, this is so difficult to be a Christian. Yeah, think about what Jesus went through for you. Number two, Jesus understands. Listen, if you're in pain, 
Jesus knows what it's like to be in pain. If you're dealing with problems, Jesus went through problems. If you're hurt by two-faced people, people that would turn on you and talk about you and, and smile in your face and stab you in the back, then Jesus knows all of that too. He experienced all of that. Jesus went through what he went through so that he could meet you where you are, so that he, he we do not serve a God who, who, who has not experienced what we have experienced. So Jesus went through all of that and now he can relate to you and you can relate to him. He understands and he cares cares and he will see you through it. Number three. And finally, the, the title of today's message is where I'll close. I'll, I'll get out where I got in. Live your life in honor of Jesus's death. L live your life in a way that makes Jesus's death worth it. When you think about all that Jesus went through and he suffered for you, then you should want to make every second of every day count. After everything that he went through for you, what will you do for him today? When you get to heaven, you want to be able to look at Jesus and say, here I am, Lord. Your death was not in vain. I did what you wanted me to do. Your grace was not wasted on me. No, I know what you did for me, but I want to show you what I did. Listen, I live my life in honor of your death, and that's how we're supposed to live. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and declare this and prophesy this over your own life. Say this. Say, Father, I thank you for reminding me of the price Jesus paid for me. Jesus was bruised, beaten, tortured, and crucified for me. Jesus willingly took the pain associated with the cross for the joy that was set before him. And I am part of that joy. While Jesus was being beaten, he thought about me. While the nails were driven through his hands, he focused on all those that would be saved. I was in that number. I am one of those who has been saved because of Jesus. Jesus died for me. Jesus took my place. Jesus paid my debt. Jesus saved me from sin, from hell, and from the grave. So Father, I am eternally thankful to you for Jesus. I live my life in honor of Jesus's death. Jesus's death for me shall not be in vain. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org and click on the messages and sign up. You're going to get the messages in your email inbox for free. Sign up, you know, just do that. It doesn't make any sense not to do it. Get the messages in your email inbox and, and get them on a daily basis. Listen, I know that these are not the type of messages that I was teaching like, hey, you can do it. You can press through it. You can do all things, encouraging you and all of that. I got it. I'm encouraging you in a different way. We're, we're getting ready for Easter Sunday. I want you to know what this is about. Jesus went through all of that and he did it for you. Now, what are you going to do for him? Do me a favor. Share this message on your social media before you leave the screen. Let's let everyone everywhere know what Jesus did for them. And let's live our lives in honor of his death. God bless you.